All right, so today we're going to put a head unit in the uh, road track that's got some more features than the than the old head unit used to have uh, for the radio. Now, if we count up all the wires coming from this head unit, we come up with 10. If we count the number of wires coming out of the radio uh, connectors, we have 12. One isn't going to get used. It's this orange wire, which is illumination. We're not going to, we don't have access to illumination, so we're not going to hook that up. The radio is illuminated. It's just this controls the, the intensity of the light. I don't have that feature, so I'm not going to worry about it. So that brings us down to 11 wires. This wire here, the blue wire, is going to connect with the red connection here. That's the ignition connection. It's on when the ignition's on, off when the ignition's off. This wire triggers the amplifiers in the speakers. The old unit had a blue wire coming out of here to do that with. This doesn't. All I need to do is connect the blue wire to this red wire which is on when the ignition's on and I'll have power to the amplified speakers. So that's how we're going to do that and that brings us down to a total of 10 connections. Between the um, mounting plate here and the head unit here it kept sliding in and out, so I said, how am I going to stop that from sliding in and out? This will hold it, but it will still rattle and shake. So, basically what I did was I just used silicone. Now, as long as silicone isn't disturbed, it's going to hold the pieces in place. But if I ever need to remove it, all I have to do is run a razor knife underneath it, slice it and the head unit will fly right out of there no problem well once it's disconnected from the body of the car now bunch of wiring here look at all these wires holy smoke it looks like uh, you know spaghetti but it's not that hard to figure out and the best way to connect wires Everybody uses butt connectors and all these other things. But the best way to connect wires is with solder and a soldering gun. I'm going to set up here and show you how to solder and insulate wires using this little tool here. What is that thing? Well, let's take a look at the box. So there it is. It's called a uh, Pro's Kit Helping Hands. And as you can see by the illustration, it's holding a, it's holding a board there. Um, it's got a magnifying glass that comes with it. Uh, the thing about this is, is when you're trying to solder wires like this, you you can't keep them together with your hands and so this little set of pincher clips keep the wire together so you can touch the soldering iron and apply a nice bead of solder there. Uh, I can't think of another way you could do this other than maybe have somebody hold the wires for you but this is even more secure than having somebody hold them. So we're going to get to doing that here. I have to get some uh, some slide over shrink tubing and then we'll get to it.
The other tool I find helpful, we'll move this out of the way, is this um, Pros Kit cable stripper. Little tiny thing. But it works great to uh, strip wires. The way you do it is you slide the wire in here, hold this, spin it around the wire, and then just pull off the little end that you're trying to strip off. Uh, works really good. It's not a big huge tool. That's why I keep it in here so I won't lose it. Alright, so all the wires are hooked up. All the shrink tubing is shrunk. Now it's time to plug this thing in and see if it works. Alright, so we know <laughs> nothing is ever going to, you know, be easy, right? So what happened? Well, I plugged everything in and got my ground connections and everything. And the uh, radio fired right up and connected Bluetooth and the phone with all my songs on it. And everything was going along swimmingly. I was setting equalizers and all kinds of stuff. And I noticed there's something a little anemic about the sound. What is it? Well, uh, over here, <laughs> the right side speaker was not working. So I kept fiddling around trying and uh, nope, not, not working. So what did I do? Well, uh, I reverted back to the old stereo. And that's partly why I bought a new set of cable connectors so I could leave the existing um, harness from the old headset virtually intact. I had to make a couple uh, jumper connections with uh, with some with some um, some jumper leads like like uh, you know like these the typical jumper leads and so connecting the the old head unit back into the wiring harness I experienced the same symptoms no right speaker so what does that tell me the likelihood of two decks having the same channel out at the same time is pretty astronomical. So, what do we do? Well, we, of course, need to get at that speaker and figure out, is there something wrong with it? Is it working properly? So I did some initial tests and they were inconclusive. So that told me time rich to take the door panel off, get at the speaker, and see what's going on. So, that's what I did. Now, <laughs> how do you take a door panel off? Here's the door panel on the driver's side, all intact, of course. So, here we are. Door panel. There it is. How do you get it off? Well, behind here, there is a, a bolt. You can see it in there. See it? Right there? Yeah, so you unfasten that bolt. That takes your, your grab handle off. In my case, I have these little cup holders. I probably didn't have to take it off, but I did just to be sure I wasn't going to get hung up by this thing. Over here is a is a pry hole. You may not be able to see it. Let's see if we can get some light on it here. One second. Yeah, see it there? Little that little pry hole right there. Okay, so you put a screwdriver in there and you just pry that out. Now it'll 
it'll hang out here and once you get the door panel unsprung or unclipped from its clips that go all the way around the entire door panel once you get all those clips off then you can shove this thing through the hole kind of sideways shove it back in and then the door panel will just come right off so what's the back of the door panel look like well we'll take a look but before we do that uh, there's two little buttons here okay here and here and when you take the buttons off behind it are two little snaps I'll show you the piece uh, taken off so there are the two little snaps and in the snaps are screws right here and so you unscrew the screws and that little upholster piece comes off which uh, then reveals two big screws behind it and you unscrew those and that releases the part of the door panel that's right here it's actually let's see right here so those two screws and then you can see they're pinning the door panel on so you have to remove those as well now the only thing holding the door panel in are the spring clips that go around the panel so here's a door panel well there it is on my son's Prius there's the complete door panel here's obviously the speaker opening the handle opening and that window regulator switch deal fits in there so these clips are what hold the door panel on and if we look at one here we see that they're kind of like a closed pin that kind of closes up and then snaps open so they kind of let's see if we can do it here it kind of it kind of closes and then springs back and that tension holds this panel onto the sheet metal of the door so you have to overcome this spring you have to kind of because the hole's smaller than the spring obviously to hold it in place so you have to kind of pry these off but I like these um, metal ones versus the uh, plastic things that tend to break when they're older and then you have to buy a bunch of new ones and reinstall them so I, I like these better um, going to be a lot easier to put it back on and of course installation is the opposite of removal so you just you know find the holes and then boop, give it a little shot and pound that clip over the into the hole and then it'll snap back in place and hold the whole panel in now let's go take a look at the speaker so these aren't some cheap fly-by-night speaker um, this speaker is made by a company called Infinity. The speaker has its own amplifier. It's under my thumb there. You can see the little horseshoe ring going around. That's an amplifier. Now, most speakers are just a speaker. They don't have an amplifier. They rely on the amplifier of the deck or a separate amplifier. These have them uh, bolted on with the, uh, with the speaker itself. So... I'm going to look these up and see how much they cost. So, there you go. Uh, $199 each, including the plug. Uh, you can get them for 40 bucks less without the plug. Uh, so, needless to say, the Road Trek has four of these. We're talking about a lot of money to replace a speaker. So delving into this and figuring out what's going on with the speaker is worth some money to me 
So I took it out and uh, just jiggled some wires, made sure everything's connected, there's no short circuits or anything anywhere, and blew, I'm blowing it out with a little bit of air, and lo and behold, it started working again. So I think it just had some dust or something in a contact that was keeping it from working and my disturbing it by unscrewing it, taking it out, moving it around, blowing it out with some air. I think that just re-established the connection. So, let's take a listen. So, there you go. Um, back working again. I'm going to put it all back together and uh, that's about 200 bucks I can keep in my wallet. I don't have to spend on a new speaker. So I'm happy about that. And the new deck is doing a nice job of picking up music off my phone and my phone transmits it to the new deck with uh, Bluetooth and I can listen to all the songs on my uh, various phone, computer, wherever I have music but I had this old Pioneer deck or uh, Alpine deck that um, I couldn't play anything on it. Now I can even play old uh, old time radio CDs through this deck. So I'm really happy. I got full musical capability now. So lots of moving parts in this video. Uh, <laughs> the uh, the uh, sound deck or radio or whatever you want to call it seems like it's working really well. Uh, I had that problem with the speaker cutting out on the passenger door and seem to have solved that problem just by removing it, cleaning it up a little bit. I think it was probably a maybe a dirty contact or something. And putting things back together, everything seems to be working good. So if any part of this video was helpful, taking apart that door panel, uh, figuring out how to do that, uh, you might need to do that for a window regulator or other things in the door. So that might be a helpful thing. If it is, um, if you liked any part of this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you think it would help somebody else, uh, please share it with them. If you'd like to get more content like this, then uh, subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when the content is posted. And as always, comment as you see fit. Till the next video, put on a song you like and listen to it. Thanks for watching. See you later.